Hey guys, it's Jason here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the video. Today we're doing an upgrade on the Traxxas Max Slash. Now, if you remember in one of the first videos I ever did with this truck, I had mentioned that I had ordered some trail parts. I actually think I had them ordered before I even got the truck, just because I wanted to add a little bit of character. I always like strengthening up my four corners. I feel between the C hubs, steering knuckles, rear hub carriers, they benefit from being aluminum, especially with the Max, because there was always kind of an issue with this kind of little bottom kind of bolt thing that went in here and it would back off and you just end up either one losing the screw itself, or I've actually broken these as well before. So I think going with aluminum is going to improve that as well as guys, I went with the aluminum bell cranks. Now, to be fair, when it comes to the bell cranks, I have not had any problem with them on any of my Max trucks. I've had two or three uh, 4S Max trucks now, never had a problem with them. However, I thought between kind of having a crappy servo that maybe by improving the bell crank assembly, this servo will work a little bit better, keep things a little bit more straight, keep things a little bit more solid, as well as just, I'll be you know upfront with you guys, it's gonna look cool as well. So the green parts though, so obviously as you can see, we've got blue and red, the green's gonna look a little bit odd. I am gonna change those out. So I think I'm gonna go with actually all red Garage Life RC parts now. I think that's gonna be really, really cool. I kinda wanna just have a little bit of fun with this truck, give it quite a bit of character. So when it's out ripping around, it really stands out and it just looks awesome. Same guys goes for the body. At some point I will pick up a clear body or one of the pro graphics body and do something fun with that. But either way, guys, I just want to get to installing those parts to see how all this looks. This is going to be kind of a quick video. I'm not going to make this go on forever and do a time lapse or anything like that. You are just going to see the parts on the truck unless I have any issues. And as always, if I do, I'll let you know what they are. Now I've got the one driver's side corner on guys and obviously it looks great, but I do want to just kind of make you guys aware of one thing. So with the trio kit, you get two extra bearings. So you get kind of this outside one here and you get the next one that sits inside. You have to kind of reuse the outer one from the stock uh, hub carriers with this kit. The only thing I found is that with this kit, because of the size of the axle, you can't actually use the outer bearing. So I'm referring to this one right here. That will not go in there. Well, it'll go in there, but then you can't get this actual axle in it just hits and you can't push it all the way in so i don't know if maybe if i was running like the steel cvd kit or whatever it is there from traxxas if then all that would work because i also have right here this little guy this little collar and i tried everywhere to put that in and every single time i put it in i could not then get the actual out driver anything in it just it wouldn't it would go up to maybe part of the thread but then you wouldn't actually get the pin unfortunately so that was the only thing i noticed now this is still the same amount of bearings that would have came with the stock traxxas hub carrier with the trail you gain that outer one but for some reason guys like i said with this axle it does not work i'm not quite sure why and at some point, if I ever upgrade to the steel ones, we'll be able to check it out. But either way, I'm going to get the other side on now and then start working on the front. And All right, guys, in typical fashion, we've gone ahead and finished off the truck. So you just saw the rear hub carriers. We now have the bell cranks, the steering knuckles, and the C-hubs on. And there's a reason I'm holding this knife, and I'm going to share that with you guys now. But first, I'm just going to bring you in a little bit closer to the C-hub and the steering knuckle. All right, guys, so the reason I brought you down here is this. This guy right here is your stock kind of pin screw that goes in right here. So it goes into your arm, holds into the bottom of the C-hub. The trail kit comes with these two screws right here. They basically look like that. They're kind of like a shorter one of these things. Now, the nice thing is, is that obviously you have a cap on each end because there's a head on, on each end of the screw. So you have kind of a better support. The issue lies though with, you can see right here, this is a very deep thread. These screws right here are a very fine thread. And what happens is, is you drill through here. So you kind of line up your bit, you find your right size, you go through and then you punch through. That's not a big deal. But when you go to install these, the thread is so fine that as it screws into the plastic, the plastic itself, the part that's kind of tearing away for the thread actually ends up sitting in these threads right here. Now, again, this is guys very, very deep. These ones are very, very fine. And the reason that's such a bad thing is that the screw itself then doesn't actually want to tap the hole. It sort of just kind of runs in the hole. And you'll actually find where you start to screw in and then it'll almost feel like it's kind of stripping. It'll just want to keep turning. You have to back off. And the reason I had this little knife here out was I had to basically clean the threads out. 
with a knife because they were so kind of fine in that thread that you had to kind of use a knife just to kind of pick them out and then kind of almost unwrap them. So then what you end up doing is you screw into it, maybe like a full turn, let's say, a full turn of the thread, back out, clean your thread, go in again and go in again. Probably took me about three or four times on each hole to do that properly. If not, you'll find your screw goes in and then all of a sudden it'll just start spinning. There was actually guys earlier, a large mess down here. But unfortunately, the first video I recorded showing all this, my audio, I don't know if I hadn't turned on my actual mic, but my audio had gone to crap and it sounded horrible. And I'd already kind of cleaned up the mess because I thought the video was done. And it wasn't until I uploaded the video that I was like, oh man, that sounds horrible. So I'm kind of reshooting this part so that you guys can see this. I just don't have the mess and the little fine threads that I had. What I will do is I probably still have the video itself with the bad audio. I'll just kind of take a little clip. I'll throw that up on the uh, screen right now. So you'll see the mess that I'm talking about. But basically what you want to do when it comes to these two bottom ones right here, again, guys, is just go in, maybe a turn, back it off, clean out your threads, go in again, clean out your threads, maybe do that three or four times. This will work. I had it in the first time and it worked no problem guys. And when I was driving this truck guys in stock form and jumping in and stuff, I had no issues either, but having the actual screws like this guys and having the caps on each end is what I would much prefer. So that is why I went through the trouble of doing this. They are now nice and tight. They're nice and snug. They're not stripping or anything like that. You rinse them in, they stop, all is good. So either way, I just wanted to let you guys know that because if you are doing this, the last thing you want to do is kind of send it in and end up wrecking the threads inside or the threads that you're trying to make, you're trying to tap inside the arm. So again, just be aware of that. All right, one other thing guys that I had an issue with was just like with the rear hub carriers, I could not use the third bearing. So this is the other bearing that sits right kind of here inside the steering knuckle. And just because of the way the axle is and the way it's kind of all big and bulky right here, it won't sit in the bearing. So this hole, this, in, this inner hole would have to be bigger to use that. My guess is it must have something to do with the Traxxas like steel CVD kit that they have. Maybe that works. But with the stock drive shafts, guys, it does not work. Now you still have the two bearings. So you still have one here and you still have one right about here, which is the way the kit comes, like the way the Traxxas Max comes stock. So you basically still have all the same bearings. You're not, you're just not able to kind of utilize using this third bearing, which is kind of a bit of a bummer. But on the positive note, guys, after all that, again, minor things you just need to be aware of. But this guy's looks absolutely insane. I have talked to Tyson at Garage Life RC and I'm gonna be doing some red guards, the red battery mounts, the red wheelie bar wheels, probably the ESC mount too, just to kind of make things kind of match a little bit. So we blue and red, red. We're gonna, at one point, I'm gonna do the Traxxas blue caps and the threaded collars, but this will all look really sweet. You can also see now guys in there, there are the bell cranks. Now they too come with bearings. So you do get included bearings for the bottom and the top. I just chose to use the Traxxas bearings that were already in the stock bell cranks only because the truck is still brand new. And because it's brand new, the bearings are not worn down or anything like that. They're not used all that much. The truck's only been out two or three times. So I decided just to use the Traxxas bearings and I will switch over to the uh, trail bearings, the ones that come with the kit when those bearings have worn out and all that kind of stuff. But either way, you guys can see that looks sweet. Now, I actually, guys, had just gotten home from going out to run this truck and actually my Creighton 6S EXB RTR version 2, if you want to call it that for the first time. But unfortunately, it is so wet out there because we've had three days of rain. Everything was just like a swamp. It was absolutely awful. So I'd actually gone out and walked on the grass first and was like... And I was like, no, I'm not putting the trucks through that. So I came home, decided to reshoot this part. Cause like I mentioned, I had a messed up audio in the first time I'd recorded it. So I thought I would just kind of come back and give it a reshoot. So you guys don't have to listen to something really horrible, but either way, guys, there it is. We've got the trio rear hubs. Now the steering knuckles, the C hubs and the bell cranks. Definitely liking the way that looks. And from here, guys, besides from those garage life RC parts coming, the next big upgrade will come in the form of the ESC and the motor. The Max 8 is working awesome with this motor. This truck is a lot of fun with it. It definitely changed it like I've mentioned in many, many videos. However, I wanna add some more power to this thing. I wanna see what I can do with it. I wanna see what I can put the stock gears and all that kind of stuff through. Because so far guys, this truck has really, really held up besides from the rear bulkhead. 
Now, at the beginning of the video, I did mention that I was going to kind of do a quick recap. And if you've watched any of the videos, guys, on this truck, it's been very, very positive. I've absolutely loved this truck. I love driving it. My only worry is with the bulkheads. On my Max trucks, I had broke the rear bulkhead, and now on this one I have. And I haven't driven it that hard yet, so I'm a little kind of weary that if this is going to be an issue, if breaking these rear bulkheads is the thing, that's going to kind of impact on how I want to enjoy the truck and how I want to jump it and send it. And I don't really feel like sticking a big chunk of aluminum in the back, so going with an aluminum bulkhead, I don't really want to do with this truck. So once... We, once we get out and really start running it, we'll see how the rear bulkhead is. We'll see how it holds up. Even though it's broken right now, we're still going to see how it holds up. And because I'm not going to change it, guys, until that rear end basically like explodes. Once it's done, I'll change it. We'll go back out again. But if I do break it again, then that's going to leave me kind of wondering where this truck fits in. Because the truck is a lot of fun to drive on the ground. It's a lot of fun when you keep all four tires on the ground, but at the same time, guys, I do want to jump it. I want to have fun with this truck, but I also don't want to deal with having to replace bulkheads all the time. So either way though, guys, there you have it. This thing looks wicked now. Loving the trail parts, loving the Garage Life RC parts. And stay tuned, guys, because I've got other parts coming too for this truck that I haven't mentioned yet. And I've got to stay quiet on them, but they are coming. But either way, guys, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe and have a great day.